Overpaying for anything sucks, especially socks. So why pay $45 for a single pair of grip socks when you can spend less than half? Pure Grip Socks Pro feature our best materials for optimal fit, moisture wicking, and performance at a fair price. Just $16.99 a pair at puregripsocks.com. So you went out and spent $150 plus on an official match ball. How do you take care of it? By the way, these tips will also apply to regular footballs as well. Perhaps the most important tip in this video and something that I see happening far too often, do not sit on your football, whether it's a match ball or anything else. If you find that your ball is flying through the air in this egg shaped pattern, it's kind of wobbling through the air. That's because the ball is warped, typically because people are sitting on the ball and compressing it over prolonged periods of time. This puts way more stress on the ball than there should be for a longer time period than there should be, which will warp the entire ball changing its shape from being perfectly round into something that's like an egg, which of course will impact its performance and potentially its long-term durability. So if you need somewhere to sit, sit on the ground, sit on the bench, don't sit on the ball. Like most things these days, you probably bought your match ball online, which means it needed to be shipped to you. And this has less to do with actually caring for the ball and more so to do with getting a proper example of a match ball in the first place, especially if you're gonna be spending that much money on one single football. Nonetheless, what you're often going to find when a match ball is shipped to you is it's going to come in a box partially inflated with air, which means that when it arrives, it's going to have the round shape you expect a football to have. But sometimes you don't get the box and they crumple the ball up completely deflated and the end result are these nasty creases that you get on the surface of the ball that you would hope would go away when you inflate it with air, but very often or more often than not, at least in my experience, you're left with these creases on the ball pretty much forever. It's possible that over time they will go away, but if they're deep enough like they are on this official Champions League match ball, that's pretty much gonna be there forever. And I just don't think that's right, given how much this product costs. If this happens to you, I would strongly recommend getting in contact with the retailer you purchased it from and having the ball replaced, because in my opinion, that's unacceptable. Now the very first thing you're going to do when you get a new football in general is put air in it, especially if it's a match ball like I talked about in a recent video because of the softer material they use for the bladder, they typically don't hold their air as efficiently as a cheaper football would, which means you have to put air in it every couple days, sometimes every day depending on the ball itself. So keeping a pump handy is very important. But in regards to putting air in the ball, there are two things you have to keep in mind. The first thing you wanna do is lubricate the needle of the pump, whether that means just placing it on your tongue and getting it a little bit wet. I've also heard of people carrying around some Vaseline and putting a little bit of that on the needle. Basically, the reason why you wanna do that is to make sure that as you're sliding that needle into the valve, there's no real friction because if you're using a needle that's a little bit dirty or has some rust on it, what you're typically going to find is it can damage the valve, not necessarily the first time, but if you're doing that continually, which you will be on a match ball, it's possible to damage the valve. And if you damage the valve, the ball is not gonna hold air, at which point you have a busted match ball. And in general, if the needle on your pump is just really old and beat up, I would strongly recommend replacing it for a new one. Spending two bucks on a brand new needle to save a $150 match ball, in my opinion, is well worth it. The second thing you wanna make sure of is that when you're putting air in the ball, you're supporting the ball and the needle so it's not moving around. What I've seen far too often, especially with those little hand pumps, is people put the needle in and then they let the ball dangle as they use the pump. And what you're gonna find when that happens is you're putting a lot of strain on that needle and if it is a little bit older, you can find that it'll break off and you'll have the needle stuck inside of the valve, at which point you've basically ruined your match ball because there's no way to pull it out. And if you push it in, now you have this piece of metal floating around on the inside of your ball that's either going to puncture the bladder and or just make the ball feel like crap because there's a needle flying around inside. 
How much air you put in your ball is very much a personal preference thing and not really something where the ball is going to suffer any damage. I would definitely not recommend over inflating it. And personally, I'm not a big fan of kicking around a ball that is very under inflated as well. All of that's gonna put a lot more stress on the ball that doesn't necessarily need to be there. But when it comes to putting air in the ball, I've talked about this before, but near the valve on just about every ball, you're going to find some kind of a pressure range. This is official air pressure that would be required if a referee was actually checking that specific match ball for match use. Typically on a match ball, if you go within that range, it's going to be rock solid. So be aware of that. More often than not, I typically just go by feel. And once you end up with a pressure range that feels pretty good to you, it's pretty much safe to use. I wouldn't say that there's much to worry about there. This kind of goes without saying, so I'll be brief, but the playing surface that you use your match ball on is going to affect how long it's going to last. If you're using it on pristine natural grass playing surfaces, it's typically going to last a long time. If you're using it on concrete in the streets, it's gonna wear out more quickly. And if you're using it on artificial grass, which is a more abrasive surface, it should still hold up really well. Often artificial grass can rub off the graphics depending on the ball but it's not going to necessarily damage the structural integrity, although it will wear more quickly on an artificial playing surface than it will on a natural one. And then of course, if you're pounding the ball against a brick wall or something like that, that's obviously going to hurt the durability as well. Match balls are designed for, as the name would suggest, use in matches, anything out of that is going to result in potentially damage and durability issues with your very expensive football. Use it properly only in matches or in training and it should last a very long time. Should your match ball get a little bit dirty and you wanna clean it, the process is pretty simple. I would recommend using water and a rag if you wanna use a little bit of soap or a sponge for that little bit of extra abrasion, that works too. The balls in general have a very resilient surface and it must be noted that they're all made out of materials now that basically don't absorb any water at all. So even if your ball got really dirty and you left it like that until the next time you use it, it's not going to hurt the ball. So cleaning is totally something that's more about aesthetics and just kind of taking care of something because you want to take care of it but it's not actually going to extend the life of the ball based on my experience i historically have not really cleaned any of my match balls and i've had some that have lasted me for more than 10 years without any issues at all you do get little marks you can use something called a mr clean magic eraser and very gently scrub on those marks to try and get rid of them but that's where, again, you get into abrasion and you can potentially damage the surface. So just be very careful when doing things like that. But in terms of overall cleaning, water and a rag should do the trick more often than not. Again, pretty straightforward in terms of not so much being about what you need to do, but what you should avoid doing. Match balls are, again, very resilient, they're extremely well made. So when it comes to storing the ball, I would strongly recommend keeping it out of any kind of extreme temperatures, really hot temperatures for exposed periods of time, really cold temperatures for exposed periods of time, leaving it out in direct sunlight. So if you're just leaving it out in your backyard, all day long that's typically not a good thing long term when it comes to durability and leaving a ball in your car in general is something where again it's typically going to be exposed to more extreme temperatures than it otherwise would be if you want to bring it in your house that's great if you want to leave it in your garage that's typically okay as well i would recommend that if you have a bag full of balls that you make sure that there's nothing resting on top of it because as those balls lose air all of that weight is bearing down. And again, kind of like sitting on the ball, there's that potential to warp the balls. And then as far as air is concerned, it's really not an issue as long as there's no pressure on the ball. If it's just sitting on its own, if it loses air pressure, that's totally fine. You don't have to go and pump it periodically. And I certainly would not recommend deflating the ball on purpose for storage reasons and crumpling it up because again, you're going to end up with those creases in the panels that you totally want to avoid. If the ball is fine as it is when you put it away, even if you don't use it for a year, it might lose air on the inside, but the shell is going to hold its shape and the ball should be fine 
when you decide to use it again. So there you have it, tips on how to care for your official match ball. They're pretty low maintenance as long as you avoid a couple things, but follow these steps and you should be good to go for a very long time because these things are built to last. If you guys did enjoy this video, please don't forget to support it with a like. And if you enjoyed the content so much that you don't wanna miss out on future videos from me on this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. All my social media information linked down below. Any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.